What's up guys? Uh, I made a video uh, a long time ago. Uh, I can't remember. More than a few months ago. And I showed off the uh, M4 Griptilian, which is an amazing knife by the way. Um, ground extremely well. Uh, it's very thin at the edge. Not overly thick. Uh, the blade isn't overly thick. Uh, despite what a lot of people think, these blades, at least this one does, uh, it actually far far exceeds the cutting ability of something like a stock paramilitary 2. Uh, this will outcut a pair of 2 all day, every day, straight out of the box. Now, could you make uh, a pair of 2 cut better than this with some modification? Of course, but uh, this has very, very high cutting ability right out of the box. Ground really, really thin. Uh, not sure how well you're going to be able to see that, but it's ground very, very thin. Cuts very well. Um, constructed very well. Not the most high-end materials. Uh, M4 is great. Uh, right at 64. Stay sharp forever. Uh, this exceeds the performance of Spyderco's M4 and their, and their Gail Bradley as well. I know I'm going to get flamed for that, but I've put this to some good use over the past few months. Uh, I've used it a lot, and I can't say enough good things about it. The coating has held up extremely well, um, and I've cut some really abrasive cardboard. You can see some lines in there. Um, it's starting to get thin right at this transition, although it's not showing up. Uh, the coating is starting to get, to get thin, I mean, although it's not showing up on camera that well. Um, but it's it's been holding up extremely well stays very very sharp for a very long time so I really can't say enough about these knives very well made uh, awesome steel awesome heat treat uh, just overall a good using knife uh, so when I made that video I mentioned that it did come with blade play and I figured out a way to reduce or eliminate that blade play and I've had tons of people ask me how I did that, so I figured today was the day to make that video. Um, so I can't promise you that this will work on your knife. I've used it on two of the knives that I have exactly like this. It worked on both of them. Uh, tried it on this one and it worked. The second knife was just a proof of concept to see if, if the same would hold true for the next knife, which it did. I do have four of these, but I've only done it on two, uh, just because uh, that's all I've done it on. Um, so I cannot guarantee you that this will work, but I have a very good feeling that it will, uh, just based on my observations and some measurements I took and uh, some consistencies that I've seen in all four knives that I've received. Um, so I'm going to give a brief overview of what I think is happening here. So you see this stop pin pretty large stop pin embedded in the liner um, no doubtedly sticking out of the liner a little bit but so what's happening here and this is confirmed by measurement stuck a caliper in here measured the gap um, the gap up here was wider than the gap down here so what I found is that this stop pin at the factory if you have a griptilian that has zero blade play that's excellent um, if you have a Griptilian that has a lot of blade play, it is most likely due to this stop pin not being completely seated and sandwiched in between these two liners. So there's something going on that's keeping this stop pin, or keeping these liners from being pushed onto the stop pin as far as they need to go. So I made a quick drawing, uh, greatly exaggerated, of course, to show you what I mean uh, with this idea. So. Keep in mind that these are very rudimentary drawings, just meant to, to kind of show you, give you a visualization of what I'm talking about here. And this is a view looking at the knife as if you're looking at it head on like this. So what I'm saying is the stop pin up top here, it is somehow, or for some reason, not seated all the way into the liner. So the liners can't sit flush together. For some reason, the stop pin at the top is causing the liners to be bulged out a little bit. That's why there's a bigger gap up here than there is down here. So what's happening, and here's your pivot screw, um, what's happening is you have this gap that is allowing the blade to rock side to side like this. So you can feel the blade rocking side to side, wiggling back and forth, and that's where your blade play is coming from. 
what my technique does is actually pushes the liners onto that stop pin as far as it will go and it actually eliminates the blade play. Now on to what I actually did to make this happen. And I did a lot of playing around and initially I wasn't trying to get the blade play out of the knife when I found that this worked. I was actually trying to center the blade which the blade is still not centered, not a big deal. Uh, it doesn't rub and it's a hundred dollar knife so not a huge deal. Uh, doesn't rub at all actually, still very smooth, able to be flicked out, able to be thrown in. Uh, just overall really really smooth, very smooth knife, zero blade play. So what I was doing when this happened was trying to eliminate the blade play. So I loosened all of the handle screws. One, two, three. Those are the screws that need to be loosened. This screw, this screw does not matter for our purposes. I loosened these three screws. I also loosened the pivot enough to where I had a lot of blade play. What I did was then cranked the pivot down as hard as I could physically make it go. When that happened, I heard a snap, so I heard a pop. What that pop was, was this stop pin being driven into one of the liners, or both of the liners, whichever uh, was keeping the liners from sitting flush on the washers. It actually just popped those, those two liners together, and uh, that's what caused even force to be distributed on the washers, therefore eliminating blade play. Um, before, when I looked down in here, if I were to have a white backdrop like this against this knife, you would have seen air, not air, but light peeking through um, if you were to look at it like this. Let me get the angle right. If you were to look at it like this, you would have seen light peeking through at this point on both both washers. And that's due to the fact that uh, this top end was sticking further out, or not sitting flush, uh, and was actually had a wider gap than the bottom part. Sorry, I can't articulate that very well, but um, when I tightened the pivot down as hard as it would go, I heard the pop and the gap was gone. So you see now that the washers actually sit flush. There's no light peeking through. They're sitting 100% flush through the whole range. So that means no blade play, no chance of blade play because the washers are now sandwiched perfectly between the two liners which are now sitting perfectly flush. So this was the whole, the whole point of, uh, not the whole point, the whole result that made it to where this knife has no more blade play. Really no magic to it, uh, it's just that it wasn't sitting flush, now it's sitting flush so there's no blade play. And that's why people with these knives, they'll get it and it'll have tons of blade play and when they tighten the pivot to the point that there's no blade play, it's literally impossible to move the blade. And that's because it's sandwiching these washers so hard at one point that you can't open the blade, yet there's still a big gap up here that allows the blade play. So these were almost like a, a, a contradiction in this knife, that you could have it tightened down so hard that the blade can't even move, yet there's still blade play. How does that happen? Well, it happens because there's a big gap up here and a big uh, squeeze down here. And so all we're doing is pushing these liners together uh, so that there's a perfectly parallel set of liners here that allows you to tighten the pivot to the point that you have no blade play and still be able to use the knife and have it function. And I literally can't even muscle any play into this. And it's uh, solid as a rock. And still smooth as you can see. Really uh, no force necessary to get the blade to fall. So, what I did on the second knife, uh, of course I did this by accident, what I did on the second knife was, uh, and I don't even know that this is necessary, I loosened all of these screws, so one, two, three, uh, again ignoring these two, they don't matter, and uh, I actually tightened down the pivot and then squeezed at this point on the stop pin. Uh, didn't hear a noise that time, so I heard no pop, but it still fixed the blade plate in that example as well. 
So what I'm thinking is that it's pretty common. Uh, if you can't adjust the blade play out of your griptilian, it's most likely due to uh, that issue. And again, I can't promise you that it is. I can only share my experience and, uh, and the way that I fixed my two examples that I, I've actually tried it on. So anyway, I hope this helps, guys. Uh, these are great knives, really, really excellent knives. Probably one of my favorite user knives ever. Uh, really comfortable grip. It's a bit wide, a bit thick, but it's a very comfortable grip. Very effective jimping. Uh, excellent, excellent cutter with superior steel and ridiculously good heat treat. So what more can you ask for? Uh, recently also got this Tanto SNG. Uh, used to hate Strider Tantos. Thought they were ugly. Super ugly. But uh, I got this and it's been growing on me. Um, growing on me a lot. Set it at, uh, man, what is it? 18 degrees per side. 36 inclusive uh, on the main bevel, which as you can see, <laughs> resulted in a really, really wide bevel due to the fact that it's extremely thick. Uh, this blade is extremely thick. Most three quarter ground striders are hollow. This is actually flat, so you still have a ridiculously thick cutting edge. Uh, and I have this Tanto tip at 44 degrees inclusive which both are beyond hair shaving sharp. Didn't lose any of my transition. If I can get it to focus in on the blade. You can see that light there. Didn't lose any of my transition. So I still have a very sharp secondary tip there. And that's uh, really good at digging in. These are all, all around great hard use knives. Uh, you, you get the full thickness all the way to the tip. And uh, that allows this thing to be a beast as far as prying and digging, scraping with a tip. Um, black oxide looks awesome when you start to get some wear on it. And one of the shining stars of this is CTS XHP. Uh, don't know if it's the best steel choice for this knife, but I do know that this has been holding an edge really well. Um, really just a, an awesome knife as far as hard use EDC. Since I don't think this is super attractive, it's an easy knife to get and really use and use hard. I mean, I haven't babied this thing at all since I got it. Um, so it's uh, an excellent knife. Again, Strider's new lockup. I've owned, uh, or I do own nine Striders now with this new lockup. Have yet to have a single one that had any issue at all. Um, so these are, are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Easy to flick out very solid uh good good work knife so anyway thanks for watching guys i uh, hope this helps and if you need anything else uh or i've mentioned something else that you'd like to see please let me know because i'm i'm kind of i feel like i'm new at this again because i've been gone for so long so anyway uh let me know if it works uh i hope it does and i'll see you guys next time